by far the best bit of Christmas is the lead up to it with all this of electronic stuff that's available and all the gadgets. So I was in Felton's today, which is a local ironmonger, a hardware store in Ramsey. And I saw this box of rope light and looking at the picture in the front, it looks like classic tungsten rope light with the little, uh, you can see the lamps inside the filament and the sort of little pinch with the sort of concentrated colour of the dye that you, the sort of the coloured paint that they use in the little lamps. Because it always, it, it tends to pull around about the sort of pinch here and it just looks darker. So it's got that characteristic look. But when you look at the back of the box, the specifications, and let me just zoom in up here on this. Zoom up. Uh, product specifications, it says 31 volt, 3.6 watts, which I'd normally associate with uh, LED fair lights. And especially when you get to the 100 lamps at 3 volts, at about 11 milliamps each, that does suggest that this may well contain LED rope light, but there's only one way to find out, and that is to open it. So I have a sharp blade here. Let's uh, open it and see what it is, and then analyze it either way. So this does have a low voltage electronic power supply. Is this a Jutai? It's Ningbo Golden Power Electronic Co Limited. Okay, that's reasonable enough. And the rope itself comes with the, the usual general disclaimer and information sheet. Uh, do not connect it to any other lighting chain seat. They really should update that, shouldn't they? Because it's all out of date now. So this is quite a narrow tube. It's got the two-wire cable going in, so it's pl polarity reversal. If it is LED, it is LED. I can see that in there. Let's uh, get the schnips in and cut this uh, tape. Also says odd things like lay it flat on the floor before powering it up and things like that. Very strange terminology. Uh, I, I didn't plan this, but then that's because I didn't know what was inside the box. Oh, this is it. I think I'll just uh, lay into this with the snips again. This is where I snip the rope like clean in half. I can see resistors inside it. Okie dokie. Let's get that out of the way. Let's plug it in. So I shall unroll it a little bit. Quite a wide spacing between the LEDs. Actually, it's kind of variable, the spacing between the LEDs, as you'll see when I plug it in. Uh, plug it in right now. Okay, so it's gone into slow dim up mode. Let's uh, push the button. It's not super bright, but that's not a bad thing. Is that static mode or is it going to do that? You know, some of these chasing patterns, the, it looks as though you've gone into static mode and then it gently fades away. This looks like static mode. The slight ripple you're seeing is because it's doing that polarity reversal thing for two channel control. So I wonder uh, how many sections of LEDs are along this if it's all one continuous run. Oh no, it can't be because uh, at that voltage, I wonder, uh, some of these rope lights can be cut at specific points. You have to find the point that it passes with just the bus bars. Here's one. Here's one of the points that it can be cut. So, hold on, let's uh, see what's the length. This is one. So that's uh, after, oh actually it's every metre it could theoretically be cut because I can see it passing from one section to the other. Oh that's quite interesting. Right, so uh, tell you what then, I'm just going to pause momentarily while I analyse this and trace it through, not that that's going to take too long, and uh, we'll try and work out how this is wired. Okay, it has been reverse engineered. No great surprise. I'll just leave this gently rolling with the rolling shutter effect here. It actually looks quite nice. I say it looks quite nice at the moment, the way I'm seeing it, but hopefully it'll look quite nice when you see it as well. It's that slight ripple because this is uh, using that system for controlling LEDs that it alternates the polarity. So in each one meter section of this five meter rope light are 20 LEDs. There's 10 in one direction and 10 the other, the polarity, so that it can do the alternating effects. And there are two bus bars running through it, and the at one end of the two LED circuits that are sort of alternated between the in polarity to give that effect, um, you've got the connections tying onto one of those bus bars. Then it runs through each string laid against each other, 
And when it gets the second LED, and there's 10 in each section, it's got a 560 ohm resistor just to limit the current through them, just to make it compatible with the power supply, and also to allow for a, a sort of matching of the LED forward voltages amongst the rest of the tube. I suppose in a sense, uh, because it, it's alternating the colours, it's using what looks like uh, the gallium arsenide reds and yellows here, so that will also help with the matching of voltages, because... Um, on one polarity, it's going to be the reds and yellows, and the other polarity, it's going to be the greens and blues, which will have slightly higher voltage. So I'd guess that on one polarity, it's going to be the higher voltage, the higher current as well, because the combined voltage, given that they use the same resistors, the combined voltage of the reds and yellows will be lower, and that resistor will be passing more current. But we've got uh, 20 LEDs, we've got 10 in each polarity, run as two parallel strings. And on each LED, they've actually got... Uh, the little, they've cut the leads as they come out the LED and then they've patched on short sections of wire and then just laid it along inside. So each of these LEDs is just uh, hooked up to the next one, two LEDs down. Uh, I'm not explaining this very well, am I? But uh, it's basically speaking, it's a, a very simple loom of LEDs that's been poked into the channel, the plastic uh, rope. And I've shown this recently in another video when I was talking about rope light. It was the one about the B&Q effect. So you've got the outer coating of plastic that's extruded on afterwards, and you've got the inner uh, section. They start off the inner section, which has a recess inside it. It's got a void travelling the full length of the rope light that all the circuitry goes in, and the end of it just comes up and closes, with which they can stuff the LEDs in, but then it will just close around it. They've got the two bus bars travelling down it that carries the power to the LEDs. And where they've got start a circuit, it appears that they sort of bring a wire out and down the side and then patch it onto that. But then they extrude, once they've tucked all those LEDs in and tested it, they then extrude this outer layer of plastic onto it. There are videos on the internet showing all this happening. It's quite interesting. It's notable that uh, you can see the plastic the pre-made sort of pre-loomed LED stuff going into the final extruder and then it actually goes comes straight out of that and then goes into a long bath of water and it's pulled through that um, to cool the plastic. Very interesting. But uh, the LEDs in this one, uh, what, what, what was that? What was I going to say there? I've just completely forgot what I was going to say. Other things worthy of note then. Okay. We've got the each section... Uh, one meter has these LEDs in. The spacing seems, it seems a bit irregular, but that's purely because it is just basically stuffed in. It's a, almost like a string of lights being stuffed inside the tube, so the spacing is a bit ir irregular on that. You do get other versions where instead of actually just stuffing it down like that, they've got a channel and then they punched holes through it and the LEDs are actually physically stuffed in like that so they have a very exact spacing. They still have the loose wiring though. This is a, a typical version like that. I don't know if you can actually see that. Let's zoom down a bit in this so you can actually see it. But you can see the LEDs are a very precise distance apart in this. But it's interesting to note that this construction here is very similar to the very first versions of the LED rope light that came out. This was trying to match the original Tungsten rope light for the spacing. This is uh, stuff from Blacher. Its mains voltage, it's got lots of really big resistors. It, they were playing safe. They, they wanted it to be bright. Uh, it's sort of municipal stuff used in sort of street uh, Christmas decorations, Christmas lights. So they used lots, they really did use tons of resistors down this to actually spread the dissipation. This uh, stuff was quite expensive. And I noticed they also sleeved uh, the LEDs here. It must have taken a lot of effort. I think this was put in manually. But it must take a lot of effort because between the LEDs and the resistors, it's really quite densely packed in there. Let's zoom back out. And I've noticed that... Uh, a lot of uh, municipal Christmas lights, the stuff you'd find on the lamppost, is also using this two-inch spacing, I suppose, ultimately makes sense because the original Tungsten lights, they were much duller compared to, particularly the colours, uh, were much duller compared to LED. So it makes sense that you'd need half as many LEDs to get a equivalent brightness. So they tend to actually just uh, increase the spacing to that two-inch, I guess. It makes it easier to manufacture it and uh, it's 
makes no real odds. I mean, ultimately, the the municipal stuff is usually cuttable every one metre or so. Again, they'll have about 20 LEDs, but those 20 LEDs will just be in series with loads of resistors to uh, make up the mains voltage, which in the case of the UK is about 240 volts. Other things where they've noted, the end cap here, they often put a little biscuit in the end, which is designed to stop the wires protruding out if it gets twisted like that. And normally that's for the mains voltage stuff, so you don't get a wire piercing through this, a live wire. But interestingly, they've done it here, but they've also, it's a little sort of a pin as well that goes up the end of the tube to hold it sort of in place and also help seal the tube. It's quite neat. So this is this is all right. I'm glad it was LED because uh, I was wondering, looking at that box, I thought, is it tungsten? Is it going to be, you know, just sort of, is it just going to be a mains plug with a simple sort of, thyristor-based flasher, or is it going to actually be the LED? And it is LED, and it's even more pleasing to see it is the sort of based on the one-metre cuttable sections, each one requiring about 30 volts. The 10 LEDs, about 3 volts each, and then the power supply puts out, uh, what is it, Sarita, about 31 volts. 31 volts, 3.6 watts. So, uh, yeah, it's quite neat. It's not bad at all for uh, for this sort of stuff. It's really quite nice.